So I request Dr. Nitin Ji Dhande, the President of Vidarbha Youth Welfare Society, to please welcome our Chief Guest, Honorable Dr. Dinesh Keskar Sir, by presenting him a book consisting of the writings of Honorable Kalam Sir and a sapling as a symbol of knowledge, growth and prosperity. Thank you, sir. Research leads to an expansion of knowledge and discoveries. The purpose of research is to inform action. Well-conducted research is vital for the success of humanity. It draws its power from the fact that it is empirical. Moving towards the next section of today's ceremony, which is about an initiative encouraging research activities, I request Professor P. A. Khodke the Program Coordinator of Innovation and Entrepreneurship Development Center to come over and tell us something more about this initiative. With due respect to all the dignitaries on the dais, off the dais, my colleagues and my students, it is indeed a great opportunity for me to give, me the, back, give the background of Innovation and Entrepreneurship Development Center. With the need to facilitate research and development activities to lay a strong foundation and register growth in research by generation of resources, research collaborations and establishing links with the industry, Vidarbha Youth Welfare Society has aimed for Center India Research Foundation. Inspired by the organization's vision to serve various sectors of the society, Professor Ram Meghe College of Engineering and Management has taken a step towards this mission. Innovation and Entrepreneurship Development Center is an initiative of National Science and Technology Entrepreneurship Development Board, Department of Science and Technology, New Delhi. Aim of IEDC is to develop a mechanism to create entrepreneurial culture to foster growth of innovation and entrepreneurship amongst the faculty and students. IEDC also aims to make the students vigilant about the entrepreneurial path and inspire them by organizing guest lectures by eminent entrepreneurs, conducting various workshops and brainstorming sessions to sheen the innovative business ideas into startups and make the students mentally, emotionally and spiritually strong and balanced by imparting motivational lectures and soft skills training programs. The institute is fortunate enough to be funded with a grant of 50 lakhs by Department of Science and Technology for five innovative products under IEDC in various domains, including computer science, electronics, electrical, civil, and mechanical. The span of sponsorship is for five years, wherein the institute has to produce five projects every year. This, in fact, is a motivation for all the researchers and entrepreneurs. In addition to producing products, IEDC is also involved in patenting, copywriting, and research publications. The institute has filed 13 patents as an in process of filing another 12. IEDC has also signed an MOU with Maharashtra Center for Entrepreneurship Development and is in process of executing sponsored projects and workshops with central bodies like Department of Electronics and Information Technology, Department of Science and Technology and Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India. We still have a long way to go, but with your inspiration, sir, we have received new directions and goals to achieve. Thank you. Thank you, you ma'am. With this, I request Honorable Dr. Dinesh Keskar, sir, to proceed to unveil the curtain and inaugurate the Innovation, Innovation and Entrepreneurship Development Center.
good afternoon amravati and thank you for having me here today i want to start by thanking first uh, vyws for thinking of me to come back to amravati and let me tell you i go all over the world but it's nothing better than coming to your roots which is right here in amravati it's always a pleasure to come here i always get emotional when i'm here because right from my first grade to 11th grade i was in amravati just like one of you doing studies and when i was doing that at no point i knew what i will be where i will be but i always knew that i wanted to be somebody and i, I want to tell you all that you should always think the same way because you have the power you should have the confidence that you will make it to and if you put your mind to it trust me 20 years from now you will be standing here and talking to a group like this because you have achieved something when i came to amravati when i was merely 6 years old because my father was a professor in vidarbha mahavidyalay i went to a very small school but it's still there called vanita samaj and that's where i did from first grade to the fourth grade once that was finished i went to reasonably well known school manibhai gujarati high school and and i did my fifth grade onward still hsc and uh, i was fortunate for studying hard i was eighth in the merit for the entire maharashtra state at that point in time at that time of course we all have to make choices the choices you have today are different we were in those days we were always told be either a doctor or be an engineer i chose to be an engineer and i said okay i will be an engineer and i did so i went to nagpur i went to what was then called vishveshwaraya regional college of engineering and uh, it was a five year program and uh, i finished that journey which was hard because while i was doing well in the school there are things that happen to you in life you cannot control and uh, one of the bad things that happened to me my father died in an accident when i was just in the first year it was a big shock but this is what i want to tell you adversities will make you strong whenever you run into adversities you need to not give up your hope you need not feel that you have lost it all but take that as a message to give it all to be even better than what you could have been all your life and that's the message i took from that unfortunate incident of my father's death i was continue to persist my studies i didn't give up my college my mother helped me to do the right things and that's the thing i want to tell you one more thing about an inspiration make sure in your life you have people <coughs> that you feel they are your well wishers that you can trust them that if you have trouble you can go to them and absolutely no doubt for everybody you have your parents you have your teachers professors but in addition to that find out some people who are really somebody who can give you advice in bad times and let me tell you there isn't a person i know in the world who hasn't been through bad times we all go through bad times but that's when the good times come because you will appreciate and cherish more when you have seen some adversities like i was talking you about so if you want to continue to succeed in your life i'm going to tell you three or four things and i will make some comments about things that helped me to get to where i am today and then i want to open up for questions and we can really talk about what's on your mind okay but uh, <clears throat> everything in the life starts with honesty integrity and hard work if you want to compete in this tough world today and trust me in the 1970s when we graduated the world was competitive but nowhere where it is today i mean in my batch of uh, 1975 there were 40 people who graduated as a mechanical engineer today you have 3 400 from just these two colleges here 
and there are countless people across India and across the world that are all going to compete with you. So being honest, having a high integrity and continue to work hard and doing the best you can always is going to propel you to the next level of success. Now, while you are driving towards your goal, you want to keep thinking what you want to be doing next. Now, when you do that, you have to be careful. You need to have goals. You got to have vision. You got to have mission and purpose in life. But you also need to think in a manner that these goals are achievable and try to make them a stretch goal. I'll just give you my own example. And um, I must tell you that your school has done a great research on me because everything that was said is absolutely accurate. On the 10th grade in 1969, July, when Neil Armstrong was landing in the moon, indeed I was with my father here in Amrauti, and I said, you know what, to myself, boy, won't it be great to meet this man? Now, I didn't say that to anybody because people will laugh at me. I mean, we are in a small corner of the world. It's not that small corner anymore, but from here to America itself is a long journey, and then from that journey to meet a man as famous as Neil Armstrong is almost like finding uh, a diamond on a beach which has gone into the water. But point is, if you keep your mind to it, it can happen. So the first goal I did was to get an engineering degree, which I did. And then even though I had admission from other good schools in the United States, I chose to pick up the admission at University of Cincinnati because that's where Neil Armstrong was teaching at that particular time. And when I got to the school, I approached him. See, that's one thing. Many of us are very shy, and we kind of wonder, oh, what will people think, or what will happen if I fail? Don't do that, because if you never ask, you don't know what the answer will be. So I just went to his office, and I said, hey, I'm from India. I come here, and I was mesmerized by what you did, and it'll be a great honor if I can do a PhD under you. Uh, he listened to me, and it was almost two weeks later, he called me and said, yes, I will accept you as my student. And that's the thing I want to tell you. You do not know when good things will happen to you. Nobody is going to give you on the platter. You have to go ask for it. You have to go work for it. And trust me, it's not a miracle that things, good things happen if you try for it. As I said, hard work can give you amazing results. And those amazing results will then give you inspiration to continue to do even more because as you succeed, you're going to find that, you know what, this is so cool, I want to do it even more. Now, not always you will succeed, okay, let's be real, because things will happen, there will be setbacks, and when those things happen, again, like I said earlier, in the face of adversity, don't give up, go to your confidants, go to your mentors, Go to the people you trust, and definitely you will find a way to solve your issue. And yes, you will succeed, because from every failure, you can learn something. It will be a pity if you fail at something and don't learn from it, because that is a time wasted. If you learn from it, again, it's going to make you stronger. It's going to make you feel like, you know what, I have a confidence now. One of the fundamental things I have seen with many of uh, you know, students in India, and, and I go, go across and talk, and I gave a similar speech yesterday at my alma mater because they were starting their Axis 15 inauguration. Confidence is something we lack. And I was feeling the same way. But I realized that I have given up everything, I have come 10,000 miles away from where I was, why should I not be confident about what I do? Why should I not feel like I can do something? I mean, I came this far, why should I not do even more? And that's something I want you to instill on you. Sometimes you will be shy. Sometimes you feel like, I don't want to ask. Sometimes you will feel like, oh, you know, if I ask this question, people will laugh at me. Okay, let them laugh. What's the problem? At least you will fulfill your curiosity. And that's another key point. 
be curious about what you see, something that is different, try to learn, try to understand what is this about. You know, nowadays you have Google, all you have to do is put in Google a phrase and you'll get all the answers pretty much in the world. But in spite of that, try to get to the basics of things that will happen. Just before I came here, I was able to see in the mechanical department some of the projects that your students have done. Pretty impressive. That's really what it is. In the situation that you are in, in the limited environment where you have limited research facilities, and nothing wrong with that. That's why everything was. In fact, you have a lot more than what we have today. Okay? You need to make use of those, and you need to put them together. You have professors with PhDs. You have several people who can guide you. Take the advantage of it. Another thing I will suggest to succeed in today's world is teamwork. Everything has become so complex and so big that one person cannot tackle a single problem. The teams are formed, and it's the teamwork its ability to work with each other, its ability to what's called working together is what is going to take you forward. I'll give you an example of Boeing. When I joined Boeing first in 1980, we were graded on what happens as your contribution to the company. For the last 10 years, we are graded as a team what we do. So if you have one person on the team that doesn't do good, we all get affected. So everybody understands that we have to pull up, work, look out for each other, pull for somebody who is weak, and people are all different diversity. Some people are very strong, some people are academically strong, some people are physically strong. Try to use those diversities of different types in your team to make the strongest team that can be, because it's the teams that are going to be the nemesis of the future, that is what's going to take you further. Another thing I might mention that worked for me was always focus on your present job. Many people have a tendency to keep thinking, what am I going to do next? Nothing wrong in that, okay? But keep it to yourself. If you get a new job, don't start looking for another job right away. And this is even within the company. You know, a company like Boeing where we have 170,000 people, yes, there are lots of jobs. But you will create a trust and credibility for yourself in the eyes of senior management if you do the job you have on hand and then do it well. And once you finish at least two years in that job and you have demonstrated that you have done a great thing, I think it's your right to then go ask and say, okay, I'd like to do more. I want to expand my horizons or I want to have diverse things. And I'll tell you my own example. When I first joined Boeing, having done PhD, I started in research and development because that's where you would start having done PhD. And I worked on a project those days called the fly-by-wire technology, which simply put, in the airplanes in the 1980s, when you give a signal to turn the airplane or roll the airplane or pitch the airplane, everything was done by metallic wires, pulleys, and wheels, and that's how the control surfaces moved on the airplane. We were looking at ways by which you can do by electrical signal, but the reason it was not doable that time was you can imagine a situation that if a pilot is in a tough situation, wants to give an electrical signal, and for some reason the wiring or something goes wrong, it could be a fatal situation. So it took 15 more years after that to prove to the FAA and the regulatory agencies in the world that you can make it a foolproof system by building in triple redundancy, and by doing so, we were able to put that technology for the first time on our Boeing 777. So, I started doing that for two or three years, and frankly, I thought, gee, you know, I'm just one of the 12,000 engineers that are in the Boeing company. I don't, I mean, nothing wrong, it was a great job, okay? I loved it, it was research, but you do only very little thing of a big airplane. So I started looking what else I can do, and uh, somehow I got excited, certainly about marketing. Now, transitions in India, 
at least in those days were hard. Once you started as an engineer, you finished as an engineer and that's about it. But I said, you know what, I want to go into the marketing. And I went and met the leaders of the marketing and the Boeing company at that time. And uh, the common message I got is, you know what, you have done PhD, I think you are better off in engineering. Again, I didn't take no for an answer. I went back and said, okay, what does it take for me to do marketing? I don't want to hear what I cannot do. I want to hear what it takes to do what I want to do. And that's another lesson for you to think in that direction. And they told me, okay, if you do an MBA, I think we will look at you one more time. So fine, good enough. I started doing full-time MBA while I was working full-time. And uh, again, you know, it's tough to balance your life sometimes when you have too many things going but you just have to go through certain years of your life with a lot of tough times. And those tough times you invest are going to make you enjoy your next 25 years. So it's up to you whether you want to go through tough times and work hard for three years and enjoy the next 25 or enjoy the first three and have a rough time for the next 25 years. And it's very simple trade-off here that you want to work hard during your college days, during your beginning days, and that's what I did. So I got my MBA, again I knocked on their door, and sure enough, uh, it's a competitive thing in the Boeing company. As I said to you, we have 170,000 people, less than 300 of them work in marketing and sales. So I got there, and we, we, I was able to penetrate the marketing, and I started working there. When I worked a couple of years, I said, you know what, this is cool, but I want to be even more sort of specialized into what I do. And in many companies, marketing and sales is synonymous. In Boeing, it's not. Marketing is supporting sales in the Boeing company. And so I wanted to be a sales leader. And so I started working in that direction and took me about another three years. And I did become a sales director. And my first job was actually to work with airlines in India because in those days, the Indian market was very small. And, and let me tell you how India has changed for a minute. In 1990, Indian market was so small that nobody in the Boeing cared about it, okay? Because we hardly sell 10 airplanes in five years. Today, the Indian market is so big that I just gave a forecast you know, about two months ago in August which says India will need 1,740 airplanes because of our growing economy. And the value of those airplanes will be 240 billion US dollars. That is huge. And let me tell you, in 10 years, India is going to be the world's third largest market. Today, it's in the top 10, but in five years, it's going to be going there. And the reason it is going there is, frankly, people like yourselves here, the growing GDP, the growing skills that we are demonstrating to the world, uh, the Make in India campaign that our Honorable Prime Minister is going around the world and trying to bat for all you guys, and including Boeing is supporting him on that particular cause. All those things are going to help India get bigger and bigger on the world map. And certainly in the world of aviation, I have seen it from no mention of India to the point I go to the board every once a year and present what's happening in India and the entire board of Boeing, which is a hundred billion dollar annual company, wants to know what's happening in India. That is a tribute to India and what India is doing. So I think, again, what, what I went through just quick talk was I got into sales, we started working that, and then I moved on and up, and today I'm in charge for all of sales for entire Asia for the Boeing company, which is quite a huge responsibility because 40% of Boeing's revenue comes from Asia. It is the largest market for the Boeing company. It isn't America, it isn't Europe, but it is all of Asia, which starts from India going all the way east to Australia and New Zealand. And the reason for that is, of course, we have two and a half billion people just between India and China. And then there are several other countries which are developed countries like Singapore and Japan and Australia, New Zealand. All that thing helps you to really do meet our target. So every year me and my team does for Boeing about 25 to 30 billion dollars in sales and that is what is helping our company to meet our goals. So 
the message i want to give you out of that is when company when you all get into the workplace in the next couple of years or maybe 4 years depending on whether you want to go to graduate school you will be given responsibility take it seriously because the company is depending on you you don't want to fail your company because if your company fails in achieving your targets basically you failed and it's going to be have reflection on you and yes there are things whenever you like when i transition from engineering to marketing i always wondered you know i have never sold an airplane in my life how the heck i'm going to go there and do things it's like when you are thrown in the water you will learn to swim in many companies even boeing and i hate to say this but it's truth you get on the job training nobody is going to train you for a next job you get thrown into a job you get a assignment and you just have to find a way to succeed of course there are people there are resources and all these kind of thing so you are going to run into all kinds of different things that i just talked about but your single determination your single mission and your sort of confidence in yourself to say i can do it is what is going to make you i i will tell you uh, and you saw one of the pictures uh the late dr kalam came to boeing in seattle about 4 years ago and he wanted to discuss the technology at boeing and everything i mean he was a great man and he came there and we spent two days together i showed him the 787 that we were working on and the newest technology and everything what impressed me about the man was the curiosity he had so many questions as he walked through and that is really important so when you look at something when you are at a new place be curious like i said earlier and keep asking questions because it shows how your mind is thinking and how you are sharpening your focus because clarity of thinking is going to be one of the key attribute that you will have to have and one of the final attributes i'll talk and i'll take questions because we are running out of time here is finding a way every time you have a situation that you run into a difficulty whether it's your business life whether it's your personal life whether it's your student life you got to find a way and deliver the results because finding a way is what is going to succeed and then once you find a way you will be able to deliver the results because nobody in the corporate world gives you credit for trying okay you could work 24 hours a day for the whole year and you didn't produce the result nobody cares about you you could work lot less and produce the result everybody thinks you are a great person so try to understand how to find a way through my situation through my problems and again i will repeat and close teamwork is important you absolutely have to start thinking about that right from today how i'm going to develop relationships how i'm going to build friendships because what you do today is going to last forever and you have to build more relationships as you go along in your life because when you when i need help like one of my customer just last week called me and said he wants a particular airplane one week early because of the high season that is coming out the christmas time and uh, because i know the guy who runs that program on the 787 i can pick up the phone call him and say hey can we get this airplane delivered early and because you have a relationship chances are it will get done if it is a person you never met before there is no chemistry between you two and he has his problems he has his work going on and he'll say well i'll try and hang up but if you have a relationship when he says i will try it really means he's going to try and he will tell you in a couple of days yes i can do it or no i can't do it so find you know this is a great time to be i i tell you in my 35 years at boeing now when I, mean, i reflect back the four five years i spent in the college were the best times of my life i tell everybody those were the fun times we didn't have any money but we had lots of fun and lots of time today we have lots of money but no time and absolutely no time to have fun because you're running from one place to other and doing all the things so make the best of your time now beg the best friends and say i can do it and be confident and i tell you all of you will succeed and i wish you all the best for that in the future i request dr nitin ji jadne president vidarbha youth welfare society to present a memento as a token of 
love and gratitude to Dr. Keskar. Ha, ha, ha.